Welcome back. This is lesson 2.3, comic book superheroes, Fall from Grace, 1946 to 1956. This is the last lesson for module two, the original superheroes. By the end of this lesson, you'll have a good understanding of how the end of World War II impacted superhero comics, how DC superheroes mostly retained their popularity at the end of World War II, whereas Marvel's lost popularity, how the anti-comic book campaign in the 1950s impacted superhero comics. Comic books at the end of World War II. The Second World War helped make comic books and the most popular superheroes, such as Superman, American institutions. Sales of comic books expanded to 60 million copies a month in 1947. The Superman DC line of comic books was the most popular selling an average of eight and a half million copies a month in that year. One estimate suggests that in 1948, between them, Marvel and DC sold 218 million copies in just the second half of that year. By the way, when I say Marvel, it's Timely Atlas Marvel. They had many different names. Even in the 1950s, comic books sold well. Look at this slide of sales figures. Marvel's superhero comic books did not really survive into the 1950s. The fate of Captain America is a good indication of what happened to Marvel's characters. In July 1949, after 73 issues, Captain America comics ceased publication with the July issue. The cover aptly read, Outcasts of Time. Captain America to be, seemed to be sinking in mud, which also seemed rather apt. But in October 1949, he returned in Captain America's Weird Tales, a very weird, <laughs> pun intended, comic book. This version lasted two issues. In 1954, Captain America made another comeback as Captain America Commie Smasher but this only lasted three issues. Marvel seemed to be in the business of cashing in on whatever was popular. So they had superheroes when superheroes were new and very popular. Their superheroes were super patriots during the war. When horror comics became popular, they had Captain America try to align himself with that different genre of comics. And at the height of the Red Scare, that is the anti-communist uh, moment in the 1950s, when many Americans were worried about the influence of the Soviet Union and the presence of communist spies, Captain America lent himself to that cause. The Human Torch comic book, that was never as popular as Captain America, suffered a similar fate. The bi-monthly comic was cancelled after issue 35 in March 1949 but was revived briefly in 1954 for three more issues before finally being laid to rest after issue 38, August 1954, in which he fought communists. The Submariner also faced a similar fate. Cancelled in June 1949, he made a comeback in 1954, fighting communists. His 1954 comic book lasted 10 issues. So what happened to Marvel? Here's a key point. Marvel tied its superheroes to World War II, which made them popular. But after the war, that popularity did not translate to peacetime conditions. Marvel then chased sales through popular trends of the moment. In the late 1940s, the sort of comic books available began to include those that were clearly more suitable to an older audience. The reasons for this were varied, but included an older reading audience for comics, an audience who had been through a vicious war and seen real horror, and publishers desperate to stay in business. You can read more about these comics at the links given here. The trends Marvel were chasing included horror comics, crime comics, and what were called headlight comics. The first two are self-explanatory. The best way to describe the third is to show you an image of a Phantom Lady comic book. Marvel was not as explicit as Phantom Lady, 
but they did try to jump on the trend with a female version of the submariner, Namora. The late 1940s through to the 1950s were not a good period in general for superhero comic books. How then did DC superheroes survive the period intact? Well, not all DC superheroes lasted into the 1950s. DC cancelled Flash Comics after issue 104, February 1949. The Green Lantern comic book was cancelled after issue 38, June 1949. All-Star Comics featuring the superhero team, the Justice Society of America, lasted until March 1951, issue 51, but was then cancelled. So DC was not immune from the downturn in interest in superhero comic books. But Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman survived with unbroken runs of comic books throughout this period. Why? As I mentioned earlier, one reason was that DC did not tie their characters to the war in the same way Marvel did. Another was that DC adjusted its story at war's end. Let's look at Superman to see what I mean. Comic books were generally on the newsstands about a month or two before their cover date. The September-October 1945, issue 36 of Superman, shows Lois Lane giving Superman a scolding look. He has jammed his finger into an open refrigerator, possibly trying to get ice cubes. This cover, which came out just before the war had finished, was one of the first of a new type of cover for DC Superman comics. Unlike the seriousness of the war covers, these were light and jokey. Many of the covers over the next few years were similarly light-hearted. The March-April 1948 issue 51 cover shows Lois's attempt at, breaking cook at baking cookies hurting Superman's foot, indeed almost breaking it. Superman, of course, is invulnerable, so those must have been pretty heavy cookies. These covers were not completely typical of those for other Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman comic books, but they do indicate that DC was trying to position its characters as somewhat more light-hearted than other superheroes, and certainly more light-hearted than Marvel's characters. This is a key point. DC tried to make their superheroes more light-hearted as World War II ended. The company positioned itself in the children's section of the market. The many crime and horror comics became a cause for social concern. Two key moments in this concern were the publication of psychiatrist Frederick Wortham's book Seduction of the Innocent in 1954 and the hearings into comic books of Estee Corfer's Senate Subcommittee on Juvenile Delinquency, particularly the hearing of April 21 1954. The negative publicity over comic books led comic book publishers to establish a comics code authority and to self-censor their publication. The code limited what could be depicted in a comic book. The CCA, as it became known, issued a seal of approval and from 1954 through to 2011 this seal appeared in many comic books. Marvel abandoned the code in 2001, DC only did so in 2011. The anti-comic book campaign is often blamed for the downturn in the popularity of superhero comic books and comic books in general. But other factors were at play, including the new medium of television. Also, the readers during the boom 1940s years were aging, getting married, raising children, and probably had less time and interest in comics. Here's our last key point in this lesson. The establishment of the Comics Code Authority and the resulting self-censorship by comic book companies ensured that comic books became a medium for children and adolescents for many years. This is the last lesson of this module. This lesson has three key points. Go back over your notes and the video of the lesson to make sure you have noted these points. Next up, Module 3, Superheroes Across Mediums, 1938 to 1958.